Your masculinity is the sexiest thing about you. Stop hiding it. So here's a simple secret for attracting a really high quality woman, a secret that almost no one will tell you. In fact, if you listen to most people, they'll actively discourage you from doing this. And it's so simple that I can actually tell you what it is in just three words. Be a man. Now, in this video, I'll explain why your masculinity is the sexiest thing about you, how to stop hiding it, and three specific things to do to project these masculine traits that women are hardwired to chase. Hi, I'm Bobby Rio, and if you're like a lot of guys, the word masculinity might make you think of the alpha male, or an athlete, or a cowboy even. You know, the stereotypical guy that we associate with the word. Or maybe you've been brainwashed to believe that somehow expressing your masculinity is toxic or wrong, and that you've got to hide it. Because here's a fact. It's something that I've come to realize having coached men now for the past 15 plus years. Most guys are secretly ashamed of their masculinity. They feel like it's something that they need to hide from a woman when they're around her, especially when you're first meeting a woman. And it's why so many guys wind up getting stuck in the friend zone with any of the girls that they really like, any of the ones they're really interested in. I'll repeat what I said earlier. Your masculinity is the sexiest thing about you, so stop hiding it and start demonstrating it. So let's jump into what I mean and how you should be acting when you're with a woman that you like, with a woman that you're interested in, because here's what happens when the average nice guy gets in front of a girl that he's attracted to. And maybe you're guilty of this sometimes. I know that I was guilty of this for a very, very long time, where we do this weird thing where we tried to hide what is the sexiest thing about us. Okay, here's some examples of what you might be doing without even realizing that you're doing it. So I'm gonna write some down. And the first one is projecting ashamed body language. And when you're doing that, this ashamed body language is where you're really closed off. You're trying to be as non-threatening as possible. Um, you're trying to come across as harmless. Your entire demeanor to the woman is, I'm harmless, I'm okay, you don't have to be nervous, right? You're trying to be, like I said, non-threatening as possible. You might be doing something like avoiding eye contact because you don't wanna make things uncomfortable. You may have that, and, and we've all been guilty of this, right? This, I'm happy to be here, that goofy expression, like I'm just happy to be here, right? So I'm just gonna write down the goofy expression. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about when you watch a guy who's talking to a woman and you can see him, you know, having that, that goofy expression plastered on his face. Being noticeably uncomfortable with any type of tension. So I'm just going to write down the word tension and we're going to come back to tension because this is probably one of the uh, most important words that we're going to write down. So it's like we try to make ourselves as asexual as possible around a woman, somehow believing that this will make her more attracted to us. And then we wonder why we get stuck in the friend zone. What's funny is, and this is something that my friend Chris Anderson, he explains this really, really well, in that when we're out with our friends and we're talking about a girl, or maybe we're at home and we're, we're thinking about a woman, we're very masculine. We imagine sleeping with her and all the things we're gonna do to her and we get really turned on by the thought of being with her or seeing her naked, right? But this really weird thing happens when we get in front of her, where it's like a switch in our brain flips and we hide that sexual desire. In fact, a lot of times, we don't even allow ourselves to feel it when we're around her. And instead, we wind up leading with this word right here, and I'm gonna write it down affection, and we actually crave affection from her, meaning we want her to like us more than we want her to desire us. Now you might be thinking, no way Bobby, I want her to desire me. Well, what you've got to realize is that the things that make a woman desire you are a lot different than the things that make her feel affection 
towards you. What do I mean? Affection is about showing care, kindness, and warmth towards someone. It involves doing things and gestures like giving her compliments, small gifts, doing favors, and verbal expressions of fondness. Now, affection is essential in any relationship. But when it's the primary approach that you take, it usually leads to the friend zone. Now, when you hear this, your inner nice guy is probably going to rebel. I can already hear him because it's part of his identity. And he's going to say things like, I'm just being myself or I can't help it. I'm a good guy. Now, you got to shut that little fucker up. Really? So why is it so bad? Why is it so bad to lead with affection? Why is this inner nice guy so dangerous? Because you, when you lead with affection, you come across as friendly, nurturing, harmless, and safe. Obviously, these aren't bad qualities, but let's be honest. Are women thinking this guy is so nice and harmless and safe that I want to bang him, that I want to fuck his brains out? Mm, usually not. Here's the deal. When you hide your masculine qualities and you only project these affectionate qualities or these nice qualities, these alone don't spark any romantic or sexual interest in a woman. And romantic and sexual interest is critical if she's going to see you as anything more than a friendly guy, a nice guy, or just somebody she doesn't even pay attention to. Again, affection is friendly, caring, and warm. Desire, on the other hand, is masculine and powerful. It's raw, and it's a little scary because it's, it creates tension. It takes a risk. And it lets her know that you see her as a potential sexual partner. Now, obviously, you don't verbally say all of this, right? But you communicate it. You have to communicate this masculinity. So how do you communicate desire? So let's talk a little bit about desire. So desire is communicated through bold behavior. So I'm just going to write the word bold behavior down. Flirtation, physical touch. It's communicated through holding eye contact, standing in close proximity to her, and acting with a certain level of assertiveness and even a little bit of mystery, like what does he want? What's he going to do next? What's happening here? Now, I want to ask you a question and think about it for a second. If you put yourself into a woman's perspective for a minute, is it more exciting for her to be desired or to be liked? The feminine wants to be desired, but she wants to be desired by masculinity. I'll explain what that means in, in, in a second. See, an attractive woman is surrounded by guys who will do nice things for her, right? Guys who will dish out the compliments, guys who will offer to do her favors. Affection is a commodity to her. She can get it from any single guy in the world. And it doesn't create any sort of emotion in her because it's everywhere. On the other hand, a guy who is very comfortable in his masculinity, who doesn't try to hide it, that guy is rare. And it's why when she meets him, all the rules that she has for nice guys, all the standards that she holds nice guys up to, these rules and these standards quickly slip out the window when she meets a guy who leads with masculinity. One piece of advice that I've given clients for years is never project a boyfriend vibe before you've slept with a woman. When we like a girl, it's almost an instinct for us to project this I'd make a good boyfriend vibe. But this entire vibe is based on being liked and showing her that you like her. You agree with her. You try to bond with over topics that you, you, you think she's going to like. You try to do her favors. You give her compliments. You buy her gifts. But none of this is masculine behavior. None of this makes her want to sleep with you, right? Do any of these things make a woman want to sleep with you? And here's a cold hard fact. If she has no desire to sleep with you, she'll never want you as her boyfriend. This is because boyfriend behavior is not sexy. Masculinity is sexy. Escalation is sexy. So masculinity and escalation. Let's look at these two words, masculinity 
and escalation because in a lot of ways they're very intertwined so what is escalation escalation is any time that you're moving things forward if you're standing there talking to a woman at a party and things are kind of going well escalation is saying hey let's go sit and get a little bit more comfortable we can talk over there why is that sexy because it creates tension right something might happen there's an edge now to the interaction. It's no longer harmless. There's a little uncertainty now. She's taking a walk with you over and she's sitting down with you. Escalation is when you're sitting down next to her talking instead of filling every second of the conversation just to keep the conversation going and comfortable and show how much you have in common. Instead, you let there be pauses and you use those pauses to slow things down, to hold eye contact a bit. Maybe even position yourself a little closer to her or place your hand on her wrist again this will create tension and masculinity is the ability to handle this tension the average nice guy has a lot of difficulty handling tension he has trouble holding eye contact he has trouble touching a woman for the first time I've been there. I've been that guy scared to touch her. Like I said, he wants to keep making the jokes and finding more topics to bond over and create even more affection because he thinks it'll show her how funny he is and how much they get along and this will make her like him and he won't have to take that bold escalation. Well, escalation is when you're looking at her and that feeling of attraction is there and it's strong and you lean in and you kiss her. And here's the important part. Even if she turns her cheek, even if she tells you that it's too soon or she's not ready, whatever, whatever she says, it doesn't matter. You don't get phased by it. You show her that you respect her boundaries. You go back to talking, but it's not a big deal to you. It's not a big deal that she turned her cheek. A kiss is not about a kiss. It's not just about the kiss. It's about what it represents. It's a declaration that you're not afraid to take risks, that you're not content with the status quo just escalating, right? Just escalating. You've communicated three important and very masculine qualities. Comfortable with desire. You're comfortable with your desire for her. Why would you be ashamed or embarrassed to desire her? It's masculine to desire a woman. You know what's not masculine? You know what isn't masculine? When you talk to a girl all night and you go on multiple dates with her and you never even try to kiss her, that's not masculine, that's feminine. Never, ever, ever be ashamed or embarrassed to desire a woman. Remember, we already said it feels good for her to be desired. You've also communicated the second thing that's important. You've communicated that you respect her boundaries. You went for what you wanted and when you didn't get it, you didn't get all butt hurt just because she turned you down. This shows her that you're mature. You're not some little boy who can't deal with rejection. You're not some nice guy who's gonna make things all weird when he finds out that his nice guy act didn't work with her. In fact, you're unapologetic about it. Being unapologetic is very, very masculine. It's actually one of the most masculine traits that you can display to a woman. You live in your own reality, and in this reality, you go for what you want, and if you don't get it, the rejection, that's, that, that rejection that, that you experience, it doesn't affect your self-esteem. You don't start backpedaling. You don't start changing your behavior to fit into her reality. Number three, you've also demonstrated another very masculine quality, and we've mentioned this earlier, and I said it's very important, and that's comfort with tension. And I'm highlighting this word here because tension is very, very important. You're comfortable with tension. From an evolutionary standpoint, one of the reasons that women are hardwired to desire very masculine men is because they signal that you're a protector, that she can feel safe with you. That's what's kind of ironic, is that the more safe you try to make her feel around you by coming on harmless, the less safe she actually feels with you because from an evolutionary standpoint, the harmless guy, right, she doesn't believe that he has the capacity to protect her. This is sort of an off topic, you know, kind of a side, something that I've noticed. Um, but given a choice, a woman will always choose the man who is ruthless and wins 
versus the man who's kind and lets somebody else win. Ruthlessness, which society sort of shuns, um, to a woman, it's attractive in a man. So in terms of tension being able to handle tension, it's very, very masculine. It shows her that you don't back away from uncomfortable situations. Now, what's interesting about all of this is she's actually way more likely to see you as boyfriend material when you project these three masculine traits than if you were to project all those I'd make a good boyfriend traits that we've mentioned earlier, right? Um, be honest. How many times did you not make a move because you thought that she has girlfriend potential, she's different, I wanna be respectful, I wanna show her that I care about her and that I'm not just looking to hook up with her, I'm not just looking for sex. Well, it's ironic that the more we try to show a woman that we'd make a good boyfriend, the less she actually wants to be our boyfriend. When instead, you should concentrate on simply embracing your own masculinity. You become way sexier in her eyes when you demonstrate these masculine qualities and her attraction to you comes naturally. And she's way more likely to want to make you her boyfriend when she sees you as that masculine man. Now, I'm going to give you three steps to follow going forward. I'm going to give you three steps to make sure that you're embracing your masculine side when you're around her. And to be clear, the examples that I gave in this entire video were about the initial hangout. But you absolutely need to be projecting your masculine qualities throughout the entire relationship with her. So step number one is to get clarity on whether or not you're acting from a place of masculinity most of the time. If you're not sure, am I being masculine or am I messing this up? I've got a quick 10 question assessment where you'll get 10 very common situations that come up with a woman when you're hanging out with her, 10 things that you'll always run into. And then it's gonna ask you to choose how you respond in each of these 10 situations. Now here's the thing, the difference between masculine behavior and nice guy behavior, it can be very subtle. It's not always obvious that you're making a mistake or you're doing something that is killing her attraction towards you, making you look less masculine. So when you take this 10 question assessment, it takes about two minutes to do this. This, you'll immediately get your score, which tells you where you fall on this nice guy spectrum. And you'll also get all the answers and a breakdown of why each answer is correct. There's a link, I'm gonna put it in the description of this video. I highly, highly, highly recommend taking this. When most guys take this for the first time, they assume that they're gonna get every answer right. They look at it and they go, I know this. But then they find out that they get at least five or six out of the 10 wrong. But it all makes sense when you read why each answer was correct. So take that assessment now, it's free, and there's a link in the description of this video um, right below here. Okay, step number two, get comfortable comfortable with your desire. So get comfortable with your desire for a woman. This means that when you're around a woman and you're attracted to her, don't feel ashamed by it. Don't hide it. Now, this doesn't mean that you gawk over her or you stare at her like some kind of creep. It means that when you're talking to her, you don't find yourself pushing that desire to the back burner and replacing it with affection. Again, affection is great when she's your girlfriend. It's great, but here's the rub. If you give her too much affection before she's your girlfriend, she'll never actually become your girlfriend. Just pay attention when you're talking to a woman. Am I leading with desire or am I leading with affection? Okay, so step number three is embrace tension. You have to get comfortable with tension. Now, tension exists in all areas of the relationship. When a woman doesn't text you back right away, you feel tension. Are you comfortable with it or does that feeling gnaw at you and gnaw at you until you're double texting her because you can't handle it? When you're talking to a woman and there's that moment where you make direct eye contact, do you immediately look away to break that tension? Or can you hold it for just a second, just long enough to display that you're okay with it? That's sexy, that's masculine. 
Here's a simple exercise if you want to practice creating a little tension and getting more comfortable doing it. This is a very easy exercise. When you introduce yourself to a woman and you do the nice to meet you, we've all, you know, you do that handshake, hey, nice to meet you when you're, when you're meeting somebody new. Just hold her hand a second or two longer than normal and have a brief moment of eye contact as you're doing it. So you're like, hey, how's it going? And just hold it. Not long enough to be creepy or weird, but long enough to add that little jolt of electricity into the conversation with her. Very simple steps to take. Very simple steps. You get clarity. Again, take that 10 question assessment below because I can almost guarantee that you're making subtle mistakes. You're hiding your masculinity without even realizing what you're doing. If you've got eight of the 10 questions right, you're probably in a very good place. But if you get less than that, you probably have a blind spot in terms of your masculine side. There's a link again, there's a link below, it's free and you'll get your results immediately. You don't have to put an email in or anything. Now, if you found this video helpful, hit the like button, share it with somebody you know who needs to hear it. I know a lot of guys need to hear this message. I did. I wish somebody shared it with me. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos. And do me a favor and leave me a comment and let me know what the biggest lesson you got out of the video was today and what you'd like to see me cover in the next video.